you join me in our call to worship, which comes from the prophet Joel? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Let us gather and sanctify this congregation, people of all ages, languages, colors, and corners of the city. This is a day of true repentance, a time to return to God with all our hearts. We return to God in true repentance for all those things which we have done that we should not have done, and those things we have left undone which we should have done. We rend our hearts and not our garments. We seek God's amazing forgiveness. We affirm that God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Amen. No matter who you are, no matter where you come from or where you're going, no matter what you believe or doubt, no matter who you love, God loves you and welcomes you to this place. A special word of welcome to our friends from Bethel AME Rising. We are glad that you are joining us for worship today. This is our fourth year together. We even um, made it through COVID by doing it virtually. Um, so I'm glad we can be in person tonight and online so that people can join us from all over. I'm so thankful that my friend Reverend Randy Rhodes will bring our message tonight. Thank you, sir. He's just... Um, started a new job this week. Besides his, his, his pastoring, he started a new job, so thank you, thank you for also um, bringing us the message tonight. We're going to begin our worship with uh, our hymn number 352. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I invite those who are able to stand as we sing. Gracious and most loving God, 
We do need prayer tonight, each one of us, each one of us that are taking part in this worship of you. We need healing for our bodies and minds. We need strength for our spirits. We need peace in our hearts and in our communities. As we lift ourselves to you, we bring along the families of those who have been murdered this year, many already in 2022. We lift up those who are and have suffered from the worst COVID cases. We carry to you the healthcare workers who are exhausted, the teachers and students struggling in these days, and those who are trying to pick up financial pieces since the pandemic hit or some other crisis met them. Tonight, Lord, with all of our hearts, we lift up your children of Ukraine for your mercy and for your protection. Standing in the need of prayer are all those brothers, sisters, and siblings who are discriminated against, who are systematically put in poverty, who are abused and forgotten. Forgive us, Lord, when we are the perpetrators. Our prayer is for them tonight, and our recovery by your grace. May we be able to see everyone we meet as a beloved child of yours, even those we see in the mirror. Lord, we lift up Pastor Randy Rhodes tonight in his word to us, in his word from you through him to our ears. May it resonate in our hearts in the coming days of Lent. And may we draw closer to you, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Our first scripture tonight from the Gospel of Matthew comes from the sixth chapter. Jesus says, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. May the Spirit of Christ dwell where the Word of God is spoken. Indeed, thanks be to God. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> All right, I will be singing um, a selection. It's called Give Me You. And excuse me, I'm congested. I'm getting over a cold. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. 
Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Let's try it again. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. The Lord is good and is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. I got to go home tonight, so I got to thank First Lady Rose for doing a marvelous job tonight. Amen. Amen. I learned from the best. I'm not sleeping in the doghouse tonight. Amen. <laughs> I also want to thank some good friends and good family. Bethel AME Church Rising, uh, Sister Daisy, Sister Mary, Sister Barbara. We want to thank them for uh, joining us in person tonight. I also want to thank Evangelist Marcus Evans uh, for joining us tonight as well. Amen. A good friend of mine. Well, I'm not going to hold you too long. I think I said enough. Let us pray. God, do it again. In Jesus' name, amen. A scripture, uh, Reverend Emily has uh, done a marvelous job reading that Matthew chapter 6. But I want to look at verse number 6 tonight. But I got to also thank my good friend, Reverend Emily, for this good friendship. Amen? amen. There's nothing like friends that you can call on every time you're in need. Somebody shout amen. 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 So I'm thankful. Uh, verse number 6 says, But when you pray, go to your room, shut the door, and pray to your father who is in presence in that secret place. And your father who sees what you do in secret will reward you. I think that's enough reading for tonight. Can we get deep down into the word tonight? Uh, my brothers and sisters, if you give me your amens and hallelujah, I promise you the 65 page sermon will turn in the morning. Somebody shout amen. 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 It's not 65 pages. <laughs> but spring cleaning is a chance to reset everything in your home. It's a chance to catch up on all the cleaning tasks that you have been meaning to get done or to do the ones needed to be done. Instead of lying awake wondering when the last time you cleaned your mattress, for instance, spring cleaning is a nudge you to get it done and to get the idea out of your head. But in addition, deep cleaning once a year starts off bigger problems, like a mold takeover on your yoke, or you can clear the dust and the grinds from the areas that you can hardly see the nozzle of a vacuum cleaner attachment. My brothers and sisters, I'm reminded that is a spring cleaning. Uh, as I looked and I started my new job this week, I realized and looked uh, looked in my living room and realized that there was a whole lot of dust that I needed to do some spring cleaning. Uh, but my brothers and sisters, I'm not talking about the spring cleaning that we do every six months. I'm talking about the spiritual cleaning that we need to be done. Uh, my brothers and sisters, so that leads me to my sermon title this morning, this afternoon. If I have a few minutes to preach from this sermon title, it's time for a spiritual spring cleaning. It's time for a spiritual spring cleaning. Uh, uh, Samuel Cruz said, Sister Jasmine, in this reading that Matt, uh, Matthew, that Jesus describes hypocrites, those who engage in charity, work, prayer, and fasting, and caring for others for the purpose of making an impression before the public life. But in the words of uh, Falsman, Evangelist Marcus, a new season in the church years is also here. And my brothers and sisters, you wonder why we said that Lent is around the corner and the year is almost over. Uh, but Lent begins today. Lent is the time to seek a season to turn toward God through the spiritual practices, the 40 days for uh, reflection and the reconnection. A spring cleaning is for, for the souls. You still have a few days to get it together. Uh, you, will, you, will you give up something for Lent or will you take the time to give up something for Lent? Or oh, my question today, my brothers and sisters, are you willing to serve a community? Uh, that question also reminds me, my brothers and sisters today, are we doing some spiritual cleaning of our souls and our minds and of our hearts? Uh, whatever you decide is between you and God. 
Uh, but my brothers and sisters, today I just want to share two points and I'll get out of your way. But if, if you allow me to preach like I preach at Bethel Rising every Sunday morning, you might catch a little hoop every now and then. Uh, but my brothers and sisters, we find ourselves at the first part of this chapter, uh, verse number one. It says, be careful that you don't practice your religion in front of people to draw their attention. If you do, you will, be, you will have no reward for your father who is in heaven. But whenever you give to the poor, uh-oh, somebody shout poor. <laughs> don't blow your trumpet as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets so that they may get praise from people. My brothers and sisters, I'm reminded that I'm from the West End over there. They realize that people just want to give just to show a title. But I came by to tell somebody today, tonight, we don't give just no title. But we have to do uh, what we call a spiritual cleaning. Is there anybody know what I'm talking about tonight? Uh, my brothers and sisters, I'm assured that I'm assured that you get the only reward that we'll get. But when you give to the poor, don't let your left hand know what the right hand is doing so that you may give to the poor in secret. And the first point that I want to share tonight, my brothers and sisters, in order to have a spiritual cleaning uh, that you got to have, you got to keep giving your best. Is there anybody can testify that I'm going to give my best tonight? And no matter what I'm going through in life, I'm still going to give my best. Well, I guess I'll preach to Randy tonight. Uh, Randy, is you going to give your best during these 40 days of Lent? During these 40 days of realizing that I, I, I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to, I'm trying to hear from God. I, I came by to tell you to still do your best. Is there anybody that can testify that I've been through some stuff in my life? I, I've been through some work days. I've been through some nights. I've been through some hills to climb, but I'm still going to give God my best. My brothers and sisters, what I came by to tell somebody in this Woodlawn community today is that you still have time to give God your best, meaning that serving the poor and the outcast, serving the lost is giving your best, serving the nation by feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, helping the blind, helping the people to see and understand that God is still in control. I wish I had somebody that can shout back to me, I'm giving God my best. I wish I, I, wish I had somebody over in this room say, I'm giving God my best. Having everything, doing your best, and you're trying to figure out where your blessing is coming. But my brothers and sisters, I'm reminded that your blessing uh, just starts to show up when you least expect it. Uh, healing starts to place when you least expect it. Family starts to be changed when you least expect it. When God begins to show up when you least expect it. But my brothers and sisters, I told you I'm not a long-winded preacher tonight. Um, but verse number five picks it back up and says, when you pray. There was that word right there. P R A Y. Pray. P R A Y. I ain't gonna tell y'all I know how to spell, but it took me a minute. I know I was gonna catch somebody's attention. It took me a minute. But it says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. They love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners so that the people will see them. God says, don't, don't pray when you pray in public because you're praying because you want to shine. But when you get in your public prayer, when you get in your, your private time, you can't even lift your voice to pray to him. He said, what you're doing out there in the streets, you turn around and do it in your private time too. Y'all just miss y'all shout right there. <laughs> but verse number six, uh, first lady rules, it says, but when you pray, Come. I got some school teachers and, and the school teachers out there. <laughs> you know, I, I I knew the pause after I said a certain. You, you know, I'm not getting no school teachers on my back tonight. Amen. <laughs> it says, but when you pray, come. Go to your room. Now what you saying, Reverend? Go to your room. I, I'm not saying go to your physical room. Go to your prayer room. So if that's your bathroom, if that's your closet, if that's your car, you go to that place and pray to the F-A-T-H-E-R who is present in your secret place. 
Your father who sees what you are doing in secret will reward you. The second and final point I want to get out your way, my brothers and sisters, is why we need a spiritual cleaning is because we know that we can keep on pushing. What you saying, brother? Keep on pushing. I mean, pray till something happens. Y'all just, y'all just miss, y'all just miss, you, you just miss your shot. <laughs> you, you know, you just miss your, you just miss your blessing. The second point that I want to share in order for us to go through these forty days of spiritual cleaning, these forty days of Lent, these forty days of realizing that God is still there, we still got to push. Pray to something happen. And what I'm trying to say, Sister Jasmine, is pray to something happens in your life. So, my sisters and brothers, I came by to tell somebody that my time is about to end, but I came by to tell somebody you got to pray until something happens. Does anybody know what I'm talking about today? Is there anybody that realized that I'm praying until something happens? That no matter what I'm going through in my life, I'm praying to something happen. Preach right now. I guess I'll preach by myself. I, I, I came by to tell somebody today that you got to pray in the morning. Sometimes you got to pray in the middle of the night. Sometimes Sometimes you got to walk the folks of the days in. And I came by to tell you that when you can't sleep at night, when the hell hounds start to come, you still got to pray till something happen. Well, good morning, good afternoon, Bethel. And good morning, good afternoon, Woodlawn. I just came by to tell somebody that you got to pray till something happen. And I can get somebody to testify that I'm going to pray till something happen. And Woodlawn, I came by to tell you, when you begin to pray to something happen. God begins to work on your behalf. When you begin to pray to something happen, doors begin to open. Is there anybody know what I'm talking about? Is there anybody had some financial crisis? You thought you wasn't going to make it. You have no money in your pocket. But when you pray to something happen, God begins to change. And I'm reminded Reverend Emily, as I look down the road I came down the road and realized uh, that gas was three dollars and twenty-seven cent. Uh, better yet, three dollars and twenty-nine cent on two eighty. Uh, but I came by to tell you uh, that I still did not run out of gas uh, because I began to pray uh, to something happen. Uh, is there anybody out there uh, that can testify uh, that I'm gonna pray to something happen? Uh, if you believe that testimony, uh, I dare.
Thank you so much, Reverend Henry. God bless you. sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation or cleaning. Mm -hmm. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when people who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Lord, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word to make a right beginning of repentance. And as a mark of our mortal nature, let us confess our sins. Please join me. Eternal and most merciful God, we are children of dust and unworthy of the favors and goodness you shower upon us. We have not loved you as you have loved us, nor have we lived as we ought. God, have mercy upon us. Lift us above every past regret and present failure. Reveal to us our true selves, and give us grace to accept your mercy and courage to live by your promise. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Give us your peace. 
We have no other hope save in you. Amen. Because God is gracious and just, and through the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are forgiven for our sins and bound in mercy. Let us pray. Oh, thanksgiving over the ashes. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth and breathed into us the breath of, breath of life. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Pastor Randy and I both have ashes. We'll be here to um, give you the ashes on your forehead. If you'd rather have them on your hand, if you would just hold your hand out. Our prayer rails are open for you to, to pray, to um, talk to God, and you may be there as long as you like. You may come as you're ready. beneath the cross of Jesus. I invite you to stand as you're able and you may continue to pray at the rails if you like.
process where we have listened and talked and we have a new vision that we feel God is calling us to and it is centered around being at God's table with our neighbors to feast on food and the spirit. And we feast on the spirit together in these worship. But in the next year, before we gather for Ash Wednesday, I feel like we need to feast on some food together. <laughs> and so I didn't know this before I walked in this worship, but I'm inviting you all at some point, I don't have a day or time, but we are going to feast on food around the table and fellowship, which always leads to feasting on God's spirit. Amen. So we will do that. Amen. I hope you have a blessed Lent, and please give us our benediction. Well, since you've given us that invitation on behalf of Beth Lady Church Rising, the First Lady Rose, and I are the leaders, we do accept that. And uh, whenever that day you come, we love to eat. <laughs> <laughs> But we also want to invite you um, tomorrow, uh, and I'll send that information to Reverend Emily, tomorrow to say her name. It's a Bible study that we do on Thursday. Since it's Women's Month, we do celebrate a lot of our women in our church. And tomorrow we will be celebrating Miss Daisy Williams on the tomorrow, um, tomorrow night um, on Zoom. And so we invite you, um, we invite you, we'll honor. We also, we invite you next year, if the Lord will and creek don't rise. Uh, we invite you uh, next year um, to the Bethlehem Church Rising for our Ash Wednesday service, combining together, and we will host on next year. Amen. 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 Well, let us receive the benediction. May the grace of God love on us, use us, show his mercy upon us, give us his peace, give us his power, give us his wisdom and anointing until we meet again. And we all shout, Amen, family, peace and blessings be unto you. Amen. Amen. Amen.